What lessons have you learned in the last five years when it comes to filing returns and paying taxes on time? For starters, the IRS is now assessing heavy penalties and, if necessary, suing and putting regular people in jail for what were previously considered minor offenses and tax blunders. You thought the agency was only pursuing celebrities, right? So did I. Well, the answer is nope. Watch this program to learn how to file taxes and get your refund fast, get fiscal debt relief, and keep the IRS happy. Don't learn fiscal lessons the hard way. Tune in now and let's get started. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Swedish Food. I'm very happy to have you. <laughs> it's just great. Today we have a, an interesting topic, and uh, today I want to talk to you about the easy peasy playbook on how to file tax taxes quickly, really. Get refunds fast, avoid huge penalties, get fiscal debt relief, and keep the IRS happy. So if you are comfortable, grab a cup of coffee or tea or <laughs> vodka and let's roll. Now, before I start the program, I want to quickly give a, a wonderful shout out to our lovely viewers and listeners and fans in North America and also throughout the world. Particularly today, I want to give a, a big shout out to Oscar Cook in Kona Kakai in Hawaii. Kona Kakai. I love that name already. Hawaii. Marley Porter in Romeo, Hawaii, and Olivia Mitchell in Whitmore Village in Hawaii. Thank you so much for supporting us. Now, how do you file taxes quickly? Before we talk about how to file taxes quickly, it is very important to understand that there are several reasons that allow you to file taxes quickly. Now, to file taxes quickly, you want to self-file online. So you want to file taxes yourself. Now, if you have a I would say a small operations if you if your if your taxes are not complicated those are things you can do yourself you can file taxes yourself now a lot of Americans are getting more comfortable filing their own tax return you know you, you really can't blame them right the there are many 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 advantages for filing taxes return now for starters you get a faster refund right if you file digitally you can get your refund faster, right? Because the IRS is able to turn re refunds around faster, especially when they receive an e-file tax return. So it is a win-win for the IRS and for yourself because you know e-filers will receive their refunds on average within three weeks after um, filing the the, uh, the the return, basically, or the date when the IRS received. Uh, receive them so you can get direct deposit you can get uh, your refund direct deposited and uh, you uh, you know you can enjoy your money now if you file your taxes via US mail it usually takes between six and eight weeks before you, you receive your tax refund so filing your refund online is a great way to get your money quickly now if you file taxes online you are filing a more accurate tax return, right? And when it comes to fiscal return, it's very important to say that accuracy is a big deal. Everybody knows that, right? So if you use an e-file return process, I mean, the, the software is built to increase accuracy and it's increased to uncover mistakes. So what's really happening here is that you and and the latest version, the latest, the cutting edge software are using artificial intelligence. I'm not going to name names here, but a lot of big players in the field, in the tax filing field are using artificial intelligence right now to make sure that their software is is 99 percent accurate. So accuracy is a big deal when you actually do that. Now, if you sell file online, which is a great way to file taxes quickly, you can do two for one or three for one or four for one tax filing. What does that mean? It means that you can simultaneously file your your state return and as well as your federal return, right? Now, if you happen to work in one or two in more than one state, you can, you know, for instance, you worked uh, six months in New Jersey and uh, 
nine months in New York and three months in Delaware, you can multi you can file simultaneously returns for all those all those uh, states. And this is very important because the last thing you want is your money, especially if you are expecting a refund. The last thing you want is your money to be stuck somewhere in you know government red tape, right? You want to get your money fast, and you want to see some ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching in the bank account. So two for one, three for one, or several for one tax filing is really important. One thing that allows you to file taxes quickly when it comes to online filing is that you get you get instant confirmation. When you file your taxes electronically, right, the IRS will send it, will send you an, an immediate confirmation, either by mail or text, you know, notify you that your tax return has been received. Now there are software, there are programs out there that allow you to have the same response from the state authority. So for instance, if you file your taxes in New York and, and, and you're a New York state resident and you file your, your taxes in, in the, with the state and also with the, with the federal, you receive different notifications that tell you, you know, your return has been received by and been accepted by the state of New York and your return has been received by you know the irs and accepted so it is very important to get that kind of uh, immediate confirmation so that you have peace of mind now another benefits that comes with self-filing uh, online filing is that you have no need for cumbersome file cabinets right you don't need to have any sort of card copies on your return in your home in your desk storage cabinets this kind of stuff everything is stored on the cloud everything is stored you can print it if you want to, and you can save it on on a personal cloud, on a home cloud, for instance. But you don't the the need for a physical paper physical paperwork is no longer needed here. It's no longer uh, prevalent. So this is a good this is a good boost for those folks who are constantly traveling, people who are moving, people who uh, are working in several jobs and can't keep up with paperwork. It's just better to have an electronic version of the. Uh, of the uh, of the paperwork so this is very important now another thing that is wonderful in my view is that you can actually file for free no need to pay you know an accountant or a tax preparer you can file for free if you are if your income your adjusted your agi your adjusted gross income falls below a certain threshold now that threshold is oh in the last few years had has been around 65 66 62 64 thousand now the irs adjust that amount every year or two based on inflations and, and other uh, and other metrics but if you are you know give or take if your income your adjusted gross income is below 65 66 thousand you can file for free if you go on the irs website the agency has uh, a list of free filing providers so providers that provide that gives you this sort of uh, service for free and and you can just file very quickly and not have to pay anything so this is in a nutshell one of the reasons why you know or the six reasons why you want to file your taxes online we will be right back right after this welcome back to the sweet kiwi show I'm, I am glad you are still around uh, I want to talk now about in the first section, I talked about if you self-file, right? If you e-file yourself. Now, let's say if you hire a tax preparer, how do you file your taxes quickly? So if you hire a professional tax preparer, and it's very important to to hire the right person too. I mean, I, I want to quickly talk about it. So depending on the 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 the, the amount of AGI, a grossed, uh, a grossed, adjusted gross income you have, you if you make it six digits if you the more you're making the more the more likely your your taxes will attract irs attention it's just a fact if you're making one million dollars versus versus twenty thousand in agi a year you know irs auditors will pay attention to the one making a million as opposed to one the one making 20 grand right which is why you want to hire a professional tax preparer you want to hire somebody who is a certified a certified public accountant a cpa or somebody who is you know one of my uh, favorite 
designation is EA. It's an enrolled agent. This is an agent that has been certified by the IRS. It's by the IRS itself to provide this kind of service because this professionals know the protocols with of the IRS. They know how the the agency works. They can give you good advice. So after hiring a professional tax prepare, uh, preparer, if you don't if you don't have one, I would say you should because this is a section we, where we, we are talking about if you are if you have a, a tax preparer so get your paperwork ready right things like w2s 1099s your past returns things like that are very important right always make copies when you interact with the preparer and always keep the originals with you you mail the copies to the preparer but keep the originals with you and i always advise i would advise you to mail them certified with delivery receipt don't try to save a few bucks on the mailing and risk losing precious personal data. Well, what's very important here is to, and, and, and what's very important is to protect your personal data, but also because you want to file taxes quickly, you want to mail it, certified mail. And even better, you can even scan and mail the document to the preparer. So you scan and email, not mail, you scan and email the document to the preparer. A lot of companies, a lot of, um, you know payroll providers have fully transitioned to the digital area to the digital era sorry so the thing that is happening here is that they will provide you with electronic w-2s so i'm thinking of the adps of the world the, the sap the work days the ultimate software the oracle the paychecks insperity trinets epicor ceridian chronos to name a few all those companies are they, they, they provide payroll services and they have transitioned to the digital era. So if you have, if, if your business works with them, chances are you are receiving your W-2s electronically from them and your 1099 and everything else. So the thing is that if you have an accountant or professional tax specialist handle your taxes, you don't have to do anything, right? You just provide them with the data. The, the professional will e-file your the taxes for you. They will send you a copy. They will notify you when uh, when you receive uh, when you receive a confirmation. Of course, you may have to spend a hundred bucks or hundred fifty, or even a little more, depending on the complexity of, of your returns. But it is very important to 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 give them the paperwork early on, right? Another thing to know if you want to file taxes. No matter whether you, no matter whether you are doing it yourself or through some, someone else, you want to know the dates for filing. This is very important. Now, the the IRS requires you to e-file your taxes by what midnight on April fifteenth, right? So ideally, you want to file as early as possible. That way, you get your refund faster, right? I think usually the companies are are supposed to mail the W twos and ten ninety nines and everything else in january so by the end of january you should be receiving basically your uh, your uh the paperwork to file taxes so i would recommend filing taxes asap so so that you can get your refund faster because there is no need to to give a loan especially if you are expecting a, a refund you don't want to give a loan to the irs interest free right so it's better to do everything fast so you can get your money fast now one thing also is one thing also that's very important here is, and a lot of people don't talk about it, but we have something called, uh, you know, digital uh, digital fraud. If you are concerned about tax fraud, if you file early, that kind of gets you ahead of potential tax fraudsters, right? Those people, the, the scammers who try to file fraudulent taxes using your name. So even if there is a, you know, there is a remote chance of this happening, why take the, the chance, you know? So in february file the taxes file your taxes so you get your money asap uh, ideally within you know before the end of uh, february now another thing you can do to file taxes quickly is to sign up for what <laughs> you know what to get the to, to get the kaching to get the kaching you got to do what sign up for direct deposit so you want to sign up for direct deposit before you e-file this is kind of important because um, a lot of folks are interested in filing and filing electronically if you e-file that's kind of cool but the irs and the the service provider give you the option to receive a physical check or a direct deposit 
So it's always important to, 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 to check the, the, the direct deposit payment so that the money goes straight into your bank account, right? And, and if you're going through a provider, a tax preparation provider, make sure that they check that, that, um, that box for you so you get your money fast. Now, the IRS, the government has also moved into the d digital area, digital era nowadays, right? So they have an online and mobile tool to check the status of your tax refund. And it's actually called Where's My Refund Tool? So this is a, a this is a kind of cool tool. I've used it myself a couple of times. I love it. So what you want to do is you want to, you know, it updates every 24 hours and that kind of gives you a regular status of where, you know, your money is and when you can expect the tax refund. The good thing is that if you actually owe taxes to the government, you know, if you owe tax money, you can actually pay directly, you know, via credit card, debit card, direct pay or, ch or check through the digital based federal tax payment system, which is pretty cool. Uh, I, I will talk about, you know, if you owe money, I'll talk about the options you have uh, later on in the show. Right now, we are focusing on filing taxes quickly so that you can get a refund. Obviously, if you owe the government, mo the government money, you don't want to file taxes quickly, right? Even if you have the cash, even if you have the money to pay, it's just always good to uh, to file taxes uh, a little late so you can use that money for other stuff. The The last thing that's very important, if you want to file taxes quickly and get your money quickly, is to always sign the return. This is so important, folks. So important. Let me repeat that. Don't forget to sign the return. Now, this is one of those things that is so trivial right people sometimes kind of over overlook it but the irs offers provides you with an electronic e-signature option if you will that allows you to you know you have to sign off that e-signature box when you e-file your return and you can sign both you can sign using uh, one of two approaches right you can you can actually put a PIN code, so a personal identification number that tells the IRS, okay, you know, uh, this was signed by uh, by the by the citizen, you know, the, the, by the person for, for whom the tax return has been filed. Or the second option, you can go through your practitioner. So the professional tax preparer can use their own PIN, right, so that you can actually confirm to the authorities that the return is certified as true. The reason why they want you to, to sign, as in everything else, every contractual document, is to make sure that you are certifying that the information provided is true to the best of your knowledge and that you have not been dishonest, malicious, you have not been intentionally dishonest, right? Because this kind of stuff carries legal consequences. And we don't want that. <laughs> Nobody wants that, right? So this is why you have to sign the return. We will be right back right after this. <laughs> Welcome back, folks, to Sweet Q Show, the world's largest entertainment show. We are continuing our our adventure, our conversation about taxes. Isn't, isn't this a beautiful thing? Taxes. I just love the word taxes. Hmm. Taxes, taxes. So we are talking about the, you know, we are giving you easy peasy tips and tactics to file taxes quickly, get your refunds fast, avoid huge penalties, get fiscal debt relief, and keep the IRS happy. And keep yourself also happy because if the IRS is happy, chances are you are also happy, right? <laughs> <laughs> no yes no yes no okay how to get refunds fast how to get refunds fast let's first talk about before we talk about the you know, refunds fast let's f give a shout out to our beautiful and, and lovely uh, fans and uh, listeners and viewers all over the world today we want to remember and acknowledge the contribution of Louis Johnston out of Fort Hill, Idaho, the beautiful state of Idaho. 
Louis Johnston in Port Hill, Idaho. We love you. We thank you for your contribution. Hidden Dixon in Strevo, Idaho. Louise Hudson in Nempa, Idaho. Beautiful city, by the way, in Nempa, Idaho. For those who are who are familiar with the area, you know what I'm talking about. This is wonderful. This is a wonderful city. So Louis, Louis Hidden and Louise. Thank you so much for your contribution out of Idaho. Now, how do we get refunds fast? If you want to get your refunds fast, I want you to do these things. You know, of course, I said earlier that you want to file ASAP, right? You want to file your tax return ASAP. This is just a uh, common sense. This is common sense. Now, the, the second thing you want to do is file online. Don't file with the mail, of course. Some people still want to have, still wants to want to use paper filing. If this is your preference, I'll say go for it. But expect a significant delay. Like I said earlier, there is a two to six months, uh, six, two, two to six months, <laughs> two to six week delay. Sometimes even eight weeks when you send uh, a paper mail because it has to go through. Like the IRS has to sign it. Somebody has to sign it. The IRS, at the IRS uh, offices. They have to send it out to the. They have to process it. They have to. They may have to send it to an agent who has to look at it. It's just crazy. So it's just r really, really, really. Uh, it takes longer. So you want to avoid that. And and you know the e, e filing is just is just free. If you have if you make less than sixty five or sixty six thousand dollars as of the date, the the exact amount is sixty six thousand dollars as of the date of this program so that allows you to get your refund really fast if you do it um, if you do it online get your refunds within 21 days so that's very kind of important the thing also is that a lot of uh, big companies out there that you know all the big names in tech software they might all they might also let you file for free regardless of their uh, of their um, of the threshold because what they want to do is they want to get you as a you know lifelong paying customer so the first year they allow you to to file for free and file all your federal and state taxes for free so one thing i've done in, in the last few years is that every year i will just switch providers <laughs> i'll just switch i'll just switch providers so i haven't i haven't been paying I haven't been paying that much uh, anything for tax preparation because I've been doing this myself. I haven't paid anything in tax preparation for the last few years. And this is something you can also do. Now, remember that most states also offer free e-filing options for state returns. So there is uh, an organization called the Federation of Tax Administrators. They maintain a list of state filing options. And you can visit their website to get more info about them. It's called the Federation of Tax Administrators. And they will give you a lot of info about how to file your state return for free. Now, one of the reasons why it's very important to file your, your um, refund, to file your taxes quickly, and I think I sort of alluded to it before, is that around tax season, and even after that, there is some kind of a, uh, you know eruption or growth of criminal activity and what people do is that basically people's you know use uh, other people's name they have identity identity theft and identity fraud there is a lot of stuff going on in terms of people stealing people's check you know refund check that kind of stuff but again if you want to file paper if you want to file your taxes uh, um, Physically, in other words, you want to mail, you want to mail the, the, the return to the IRS. This is pretty fine, but to get your refund fast, it's just quicker to skip the check, the refund check, right, and just do an e-file. So you can ask if you ask for um, for a check, you put in yourself at the mercy of the U.S. Postal Service. And remember, during tax season. The U.S. Postal Service is they are just bombarded with requests too. They have to they have to manage volumes of mail, right? And you don't want to be at their mercy. There, nothing nothing against them. I have nothing against them. But if your goal is to get your, your money, your kaching fast, you want to use direct deposit, right? And the good thing with the IRS is 
you can spread your tax re refund across as many as three accounts. And I always do that because, you know, just want to have the, you know, some part of the money go into my regular checking account, another part of the money going into my savings account, and a third and a third portion of the cash going into what I call, you know, the rainy day account. So you want to have a rainy day and uh, savings account. But this is a, a topic for another show. One thing you also want to do to, to get your refund fast is to keep track of your refund. Like I said earlier, there are ways, you know, to go online, to go on the, on the government website and uh, get the um, and get, you know, a way you can get a platform where you can track your refund. Now, one thing that is very important, and this is very, very important, please do not do not fall prey to those scams. You know, the what they're talking about, things like uh, there are some companies that want you they want to give you a loan so that you can when you get the refund you repay them that kind of stuff they charge you know the government has even banned some of them in some states because those are loan sharks basically the way this works is they advance the funds to you let's say in january or february and by the time you get your refund they would what they will do is the money will go to them and they will deduct maybe 25 percent or 10 percent or 20 percent of the money before giving you the rest you know and th this is just this is just the uh, or what they do is for instance let's say you are expecting a one thousand dollar refund what they do is they give you 750 and they actually are entitled to the full one thousand dollars so the irs will wire the money to them not you so that's 25 percent interest rate now that's not even 25 percent interest rate on an annualized basis because the loan is usually for one or two months so if you multiply that by six you know or 12 you're getting like crazy interest rates so i would say don't fall for that now one thing that is also important is that generally it's important to avoid having a tax refund think about it let me just repeat that because i don't want you to misunderstand me here it is better not to have a tax refund because of course it's nice to receive a lump sum of cash in the early spring or any time during the year because some people file their taxes late but if you think about it getting a refund and if you get a refund a refund every year in essence what you're doing is you are advancing you are loaning money to the government you are giving them an interest-free loan so one thing you want to do is that you want to consider adjusting maybe your withholdings from your paycheck, right? You can do so by submitting a new W, I think it's called a W-4, yeah. You submit a new W-4 to your employer so that less money is taken out of your pay so that during the year you can get more money in your pocket and hopefully that money is going into your rainy day you know fund or your regular savings account or your retirement account but not in anything else right so this is more this is a better way to look at things more more from a proactive side in the long run this is actually the topic of another program that we uh we have we have in the works and um, as soon as it goes that we'll let you know all right we'll be right back right after this Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Sweetie Kiwi. I am just doing fantastic. Are you doing fantastic? You are. <laughs> I want to have your question. What has been your experience so far? And this question is for our lovely viewers. What is your experience so far with the IRS when it comes to filing taxes during and after tax season? Comment below. Give us your insight. Give us your uh, your knowledge. Give us your interaction with the agency. Whether you whether you had a successful case, you have, you had a case brought against you, and you have successful successfully defended yourself, or what happened. Just give us the whole the whole nine yards. We want to know everything. We are curious. <laughs> <laughs> and, and while you're at it, subscribe if you have not already done so like this comment like, like this content share with the people who might love and appreciate the content the kind of quality qualitative content we are trying to push forward and um, 
share with people also who would need this kind of info during before during and after tax season it's always good to have this kind of uh, this this kind of info and most importantly you don't want to miss the pro tip i have something very very specific that will help you that will solve your tax problems once and for all in the pro tip so watch out for that now how do you avoid huge penalties before i even address that let me first say one thing what are tax penalties what is it you know, now owing taxes is bad enough right but penalties and interests can make the financial pain substantially worse you know so if you owe ten thousand okay you you're, you're thinking about okay how am i going to pay this um, this money but if, if if on top of that you have penalties and interest to pay that's just crazy right so you can be hit with tax penalties for for instance filing what the irs considers a frivolous tax return what that means is you just you know you're just lying on your return like there's a lot of stuff you are just claiming deductions that that never happened for instance you said you know i you donated like five thousand dollars to a charity and the IRS realizes that it was just a bunch of lies the IRS calls that in a very nice word it's called frivolous tax return of course it's a the word is nice but the consequences can be very uh, can be can be very dangerous for you so you can be hit with fiscal penalties for various retirement accounts actions or inactions right I'll get deeper into that in the show things like the 401k you know the your IRA if you have early early withdrawals early it's called early redemptions this sort of uh, actions or inactions have a variety of consequences and in this case tax penalties the IRS can also hit you with penalties for filing an inaccurate return due to negligence or dis disregard of rules now Remember, this is different from the first app item, which was frivolous. Frivolous means that you intentionally lied on your tax return. Intention, intentionally. So there is some malice here. There is, the, you know, the, 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 the return was maliciously filed. Now, filing an inaccurate return due to negligence or disregard of rules has some kind of it's not intentional it's unintentional here right negligence you didn't know you just did something that wasn't perfect but you didn't know either way the IRS is hitting you with tax penalties here now the there are penalties also that could be triggered for this three basic taxpayer offenses number one not paying what is owed that's a big no-no <laughs> That's a big because Uncle Sam is coming right after you and they will chase you all the way. There, are, that there have been media reports about American citizens being chased away, being chased all the way somewhere to you know, somewhere in Asia because they were they owe the government money. Right. So basically, the uh, the 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 if you don't pay at all what you owe, you can be you could have a lot. Of, you can have a huge penalty to pay not filing a tax return at all that's another big no-no so first one not paying what is owed second one not paying a tax return not filing a tax return at all so basically you know uh, april 15 comes and goes and the irs is like oh how come i haven't received anything from john doe and jane doe what's going on here so you have made more than the threshold in terms of income adjusted gross income and the irs is you know basically expecting something from you remember it doesn't matter whether you are getting a refund or not whether you're getting a refund or not you still need to file so if for instance you are like you know if you are if the irs knows that they owe you one thousand dollars and you haven't filed your return at all you could still be hit with the penalty unless of course you have special circumstances we'll get into those circumstances later on right and the third 
reason why the third offense, taxpayer offense, that could trigger a penalty is not paying enough tax throughout the year. This is something that a lot of um, uh, a lot of small business owners, specifically the sole proprietors, those uh, freelancers, also uh, usually have because they're not having a, a, a withholding pattern here. Their employer is not withholding money from their paycheck every two weeks or every month or every week during the year. So come year end, they find themselves with an underpayment penalty. And it, it's it's very easy to, to fix that. The easiest way to fix that is to, if you are a freelancer here, I'm just digressing a little bit here. If you are a freelancer, it's just very easy to do this. All you have to do is just create an account, a bank account, and every month, you, you know, when you get your check, depending on the on the, on, on how often you get the, you get paid, you just put a little bit of money in that account, and once a month, just send a check to the IRS, or do a, a direct deposit. I mean, you know, do a wire transfer. An ACH transfer. The IRS. If you go on the on the on the IRS website, they have all the info out there for you to deposit uh, to do the wire, the ACH transfer once a month. So that come year end, you're not at, at you you're not going to be hit with an underpayment penalty. So those three things, uh, those three things are the offenses that make the IRS trigger a penalty. So not paying what is owed, not filing the tax return, and not paying enough tax throughout the year. We'll be right back right after this. Welcome back, folks, to uh, Sweetie Kiwi. There is a, uh, this is just great. Uh, we're talking about taxes today. We're talking about ways to, to, to make money. And most importantly, we're talking about, we're giving you an easy peasy guide, easy peasy playbook on how to file taxes quickly get refunds, avoid huge penalties, get fiscal debt relief, and keep the IRS happy. But most importantly, if the IRS is happy, they're sending, your, they're sending you your, your refund and you get more ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching in the bank, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, what were we? So, I was talking about, you know, tax penalties and I gave you three. Now, there are other tax penalties that I gave you actually um, several tax penalties. I mentioned when you file uh, a dishonest, what the IRS called frivolous tax return, when you make certain actions in your retirement accounts, when you file an inaccurate return, when you don't when you don't pay what's owed, you don't file a tax return at all, or you don't pay enough tax throughout the year, right? There is also, so now the failure to file and the failure to pay penalties are very important and I'm going to take a, a quick moment to to dig deeper here because it is important for you to know the consequences for not for not filing and the consequences for not paying <laughs> and those are not the same thing those are totally different things before I dig deeper I just want to give a quick 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 shout out to our fans I want to give a fan shout out to Ashton Richards in Bernie Indiana I want to give another quick shout out to Quinn McDonald in Delphi, Indiana, and Ellie Wilson in Couch, Indiana. We love you, Ellie, Quinn, and um, Ashton. Thank you so much for uh, your support out of the great state of Indiana. We love all our Indiana viewers. We love all our uh, American viewers, Canadian viewers, and you know viewers throughout the whole world. Thank you so much. Now, if you miss the tax deadline. The penalties can be severe, right? But the thing is that the penalties are more severe if you don't file on time than if you don't pay on time. Let me repeat that. This is this is kind of important, very, very important. The penalties are more severe if you don't file on time than if you don't pay on time. So the IRS is trying to say, listen, we want to enforce discipline here. We want to enforce punctuality here. So if you don't file on time, we are going to hit you with more penalties than if you don't pay on time. This might sound a little, a little counterintuitive, but it's not. Why? Because the IRS is going to get you anyway. 
But the thing is that they are trying to focus first on punctuality. They're trying to enforce the fact that citizens want to need to file taxes before April 15th unless they have asked for an extension. Now, they will get your back anyway if you don't file, if you don't pay on time because of the beautiful, something beautiful called interest payments. Interest, all the fees that accumulate and the interest. So they know they're getting you anyway if you don't pay, if you don't pay on time. So the, the, if you don't file your return, not filing your return will cost you an additional 5% of your unpaid tax bill each month think about it not filing your return will cost you an additional an additional five percent of your unpaid tax bill each month not paying what you owe will add an extra 0.5 percent each month to your overall irs debt these are very important elements folks if you don't file on time if you don't file on time and you don't pay any tax you owe, you are subject to both penalties. Now, the, the penalties are, you know, very, very, very cr crucial to understand. You have to remember those. Not paying what you owe will add an extra 0.5% each month to your overall IRS debt. Not filing your return will cost you an additional 5%, not 0.5, 5% of your unpaid tax bill each month. However, I mean, the IRS is trying to give you some kind of break, right? The maximum penalty that you'll pay for both in any given month is 5% rather than 5.5%. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to make sure that if you don't file and you don't pay, you owe the IRS 5% maximum on the amount of the, of the tax debt. Now, if you don't file or pay for five months, the failure to pay a penalty will max out at 25% of your unpaid taxes. You know, so basically it's important to have those numbers to understand those numbers because they will affect how much you end up paying the IRS overall. Now, the however, the 0.5% failure to pay penalty will continue to accrue anyway up to 25 percent of what you owe until the tax is paid that's what i that's what i meant earlier when i said they will get your back anyway so interest also is charged on the overdue amount so you have so you have on one on one and on one end you have the penalty that has been accruing on the unpaid tax bill and on the other end, you have the interest that is charged on the overdue amount. So it is very important, therefore, to file your tax return before the April 15th, the mid-April deadline. If you can't do that, it's always advisable to file for an extension. But you, you got to file for the extension before the mid-April deadline, right? Because the 5% penalty for not filing starts accruing the very first day past the deadline. So April 16th, the 5% penalty starts accruing right away. So the full monthly charge for failing, for failing to file applies for any part of the month you're late in sending, in sending in your tax return. So for instance, if you file, let's say uh, you filed on May 1st, you are still assessed the monthly 5% penalty for that month. So if you file on on June 1st, you still are assessed the monthly 5% penalty for June, right? So the thing to sort of uh, remember here also is that this applies for applications, right? If you owe it, if you owe the IRS money, that's when you might want to, you know, you might want to be aware of the penalties that come with the delay. Now, what if you had a refund? What if you are expecting a refund so if you are due a refund and you don't have to file but the only way to get the refund is to <laughs> file right that's the only way to get your money if you want to have the money from the government you need to file a return right so once you have 
once you have the money you can put it in a, in a high yield, high yield savings account or you can put it in a rainy day uh, emergency fund or even invest it right so now the thing is that what if you don't owe any or very very much taxes because i've heard some some people say listen i don't owe anything i don't you know i i owe very uh, a, a very small amount of tax you know it's like i owe five you know five dollars or ten dollars tax law still requires you to, requires you to file because one of the things the, the government wants to make sure is that you know filing is uh, a way for the government to collect data so whether you owe or not they still want you to, to file you know so you know if you if you owe only a small amount but wait more than 60 days to file a tax return the minimum failure to file penalty is the smaller is the smaller of two hundred and ten dollars or one hundred percent of the unpaid tax this is very important too because if you owe a small amount and now the IRS hasn't defined what small means but it's just things you know it's up to 500 in practice industry experts are saying it's like anything that is three digits once you start owing four digits you start owing the IRS four digits things become a little serious but if you owe like a, a couple of hundreds do of dollars it's considered a small amount and if you wait more than 60 days to file the return the minimum failure failure to file penalty is either 210 or 100 percent of the unpaid taxes We'll be right back right after this. <laughs> Welcome back, folks, to uh, Sweetie Kiwi. Are you having fun so far? I mean, tax tax conversation can be a little uh, a little stre stressful, right? <laughs> Especially if you owe money. But the, the the thing here is that we are in. You know, our approach is to share info. So the more you know, the better you can you can interact with the government, right? So it's all about education. It's all about information here. And but our goal is to present the facts in a very in a clear in a straightforward way, so you know what what you have to deal with before, during, and after tax season. Now let's talk a little bit about underpayment. Underpayment. So I've talked about the failure to pay penalty, but there is something called underpayment penalty. But before I say that, I just want to ask you, um, I want to ask our lovely audience, what is your uh, your experience so far when it comes to a failure to a failure to file with the with the IRS? You know, comment below. Give us your uh, your you know your experience, the things that you know went on, the things that you did right, the things you didn't do right, and uh, while you're at it, don't forget to. Uh, like this show if you think uh, it's adding value to your life now what is underpayment underpayment is very simple let's say at the end of the year you just file your taxes or you are preparing your taxes and you realize that you the you know you owe the IRS ten thousand dollars right but during the year the the sum of payments that you sent to the IRS was nine thousand dollars so we have a one thousand dollar gap this is underpayment so you have to pay an underpayment penalty here or the IRS will assess an underpayment penalty now you know US taxes as as we all know are collected on a pay-as-you-go system right it's more a pay-as-you-earn so a lot of people comply to this pay-as-you-earn system by withholding you know tax you know they do this through income tax withholding on their paychecks now if you are an independent contractor that's what i was talking talking about earlier for instance if you are a freelancer whether you're doing this on a full-time or as a side hustle you are responsible for covering the, the tax liability due on those earnings and the, the way people do this most of the time is through something called estimated tax payments so you know so what you do is instead of uh, paying paying your uh, you know paying your your tax obligations through uh, by weekly or monthly withholdings you send it every quarter or every month it depends on you through estimated tax payments now if you don't meet that requirement chances are you'll be hit with the tax underpayment penalty 
and this is very important now, the same also applies for something very, very important that a lot of people really ignore. The same process applies to things like stock options, investment earnings, and prize winnings. So the next time you win the lot, you win the lotto. If you do, <laughs> call me by the way. If you do, because I will be your financial advisor. <laughs> but if you win the lotto, for instance, you want to be able to do an estimated tax payment to the IRS. So people who receive this various types of uh, untaxed income, you know, they want to pay what they owe the IRS in one lump sum. You know, for instance, that's what you probably notice. Some people do it when they file their, their taxes, but it's not a good tax payment plan because, you know, chances are, unless you are a very good tax preparer and you know what you're talking about, you might owe the IRS and you'll be hit, you'll be slapped with uh, an underpayment penalty. The best way to do this is to send estimated tax payments. If you notice, a lot of lo uh, lottery winners on TV, usually what they do is they will say, oh, you know, this person won $100 million, but, you know, they can either get it through installments or if they want a lump sum, what they do is the the, 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 the lottery agency, they take the, the, the tax money out before paying the rest to the winner. That way, they're comfortable that the winner will pay the IRS that the IRS is getting their money, the state fiscal authorities are getting are getting their own money, and the the winner will not be hit with any underpayment penalties, right? So this is very important. So one thing you want to do is that to pay the IRS very easily, it's just better to to store to save your earnings into a checking account. So you know, separate your regular checking account, the, the one you use every day from the, the one you're going to use to pay the IRS, right? So this is very important. Now, the the best way to, to, to avoid the underpayment penalty, there are a lot of ways, but there are two ways that are very good. The first one is to pay estimated taxes that are the lesser of 100% in other words, it's either the 100% of the previous year's tax liability or 90% of your current year's tax liability. So in other words, let's say for instance, you, you've paid 10,000 last year. So it's just better to say, you know, before the, the year ends, you want to send, you want to be able to send 10,000 to the IRS. That way you can, just be you can uh, bypass the underpayment penalties even if your tax liability for this year came to be nine thousand you are getting a, a, a one grand in refund from the IRS now if the liability comes to let's say eleven hundred the IRS will understand and you will not be you wouldn't be hit with the, with the penalty so you just need to cut the check or make a direct uh, make a transfer of one hundred dollars so that's the first part you want to pay the lesser of 100 percent of your prior year's tax liability or 90 percent of your current year's tax liability there is an, another way that you can actually avoid this the irs has a, they have a great tool on their website called online withholding calculator so that sort of gives you an idea based on your situation based on your family situation based your your income levels how much you should be withholding so use that tool it's called online withholding calculator use that tool to determine how much you should be withholding every month or every quarter or every two weeks depending on whether you're working for yourself or for somebody else this is very important now the uh, one thing that also happens a lot in, in practice is that a, uh, the IRS, if this is your first time having an underpayment situation, the IRS might be lenient, right? So they could give you some kind of a penalty relief so that they're giving you a break for the first time. So always, you know, you always want to file your 1040 on, on time, pay any taxes due uh, and keep track of and pay enough taxes as estimated taxes on your earnings so that 
you know, the IRS will look at all this situation and say, okay, here is a citizen who is compliant. We will give him or her a break the first time around. Now, of course, if you do it again, then yes, you, you have to pay the, the full fee. But the very first time, they will give you a break. We will be right back after this break also. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to another section of the Sweetie Kiwi. Are you still around? Are you around? Are you around? I hope you're doing fantastic, folks, because I am doing fantastic. We are talking about a very interesting topic here, and the 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 the, the topic is taxes. And most importantly, I'm showing you an easy peasy playbook on how to file taxes quickly, get refunds fast, avoid huge penalties, get fiscal debt relief, and keep the IRS happy. Because I'm happy, because I'm happy, because the IRS is happy. <laughs> you want to keep the IRS happy, there are things you have to do. You have to file your taxes quickly, but you also have to understand laws around underpayment, pen, under, underpayment penalties, failure to file, um, failure to pay, this type of stuff. Now, there are waivers. There are certain situations that will make the IRS look at you and say, hmm, you know what, we'll give this this guy or this lady a break we're not going to charge him or her so much money on penalties so what are the waivers what are the uh, what are the, uh, the the circumstances under which the IRS will give you a break like a big break a huge break before we talk about that let me just quickly give a shout out to our beautiful uh, fans and, uh, and, and viewers and uh, listeners all over America and uh, beyond particularly I want to give a shout out to Gabriel Roberts in Packwood, Iowa. We love you. Lane Moray in Windsor Heights, Iowa. Beautiful city, by the way. Windsor Heights is just a wonderful city. And Ellie Richards in Ariton, Iowa. So Gabriel Roberts, Lane Moray, and Ali Richards in Iowa. Thank you so much for, for the support. Uh, we thank those who are currently listening to us. If, they, if you want to contribute ideas and topics for future shows, feel free to drop us a mail. We'll, we'll put all the info in the description. We'll put all the info also on all our social media platforms. And uh, you can also contact us directly on our website. And uh, we'll be very happy to give you a shout out and also use your suggestion if it covers, uh, if it's in sync with our uh, editorial vision our editorial uh, goals what are the waivers now the the law a lot congress has uh, congress allows the irs to waive the penalty so a penalty can be underpayment penalty failure to file failure failure to pay those top types of uh, penalty remember the irs never waives penalty if you filed a frivolous return there is no waiver here right because of the intentional the intentional aspect of things but if you have you know you have an underpayment that kind of stuff there is no sort of intention here so congress allows the IRS to waive the penalty if you did not make a required payments because of a casualty event a disaster or other unusual circumstance and it will be inequitable to impose the penalty now inequitable is just a fancy word to say unfair right so let me just repeat that the irs will just apply a waiver to your account if you didn't make a required payments because of a casualty event you know things like robbing or a weather event this kind of uh you know disaster so if you have a disaster or other unusual circumstance and if the irs determined that it would be unfair in other words it would be inequitable to impose the penalty or you retired after reaching age 62 and became disabled during the tax year or in the preceding tax year for which you should have been making estimated payments and the underpayment was due to reasonable cause and not willful neglect let me repeat let me repeat that because this is sort of filled with, with legalese and uh, it's really important to kind of break it down so the 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 law allows the IRS to waive the penalty if you retired after reaching age 62 
or became disabled during the tax year or in the preceding tax year for which you should have made estimated payments and the underpayments was due to reasonable cause and not willful neglect. So the key word here is reasonable cause, right? So reasonable cause meaning there was no there was no intention. Because willful neglect means willful means intentional. So the IRS will give you a break if you don't if those things happen because of anything else but intention. The third item were the third category of things where the IRS will waive the penalty is if the agency realizes that the underpayment was due to an inability to inaccurately calculate your estimated income tax payment sorry not the income yeah income tax payment due to the breadth of changes enacted by the tax reform this is just a long and convoluted sentence that means that if you if the underpayment was due to tax changes during uh, during the year so let's say that basically you are a compliant citizen right and you know during the year congress enacts a new law and the law is just so complicated you misunderstood the law and you were not able to comply with the law and that led to an underpayment so this is basically what it is let me just read the sentence itself again so you understand but it's just a convoluted sentence but I just broke it down for you. So the underpayment was due to an inability to accurately calculate your estimated income tax payment due to the breadth of changes enacted by the tax reform. Now, what are the typical situations that will, uh, uh, that will make, for instance, because I spoke in theory, like, you know, the first three things that I said, if those were more theoretical scenarios, let's just now get into the nitty gritty. Let's get into the everyday scenarios here. What are the typical situations that will make the IRS waive the penalty for you or for, for a taxpayer in general? The IRS, the agency will consider any sound reason for failing to file a tax return, make a deposit or pay tax when due. Now, sound reasons, if established, include Fire, casualty, natural disaster, that's what I was talking about in terms of weather events, or other disturbances. Inability to obtain records. So you can't get your tax records. For, you know, for instance, your company filed for bankruptcy or your company, there was some kind of a, some kind of a, you know, crazy event, unforeseen, unforeseen event that, you know, ha that destroys all the, all the records. So you can't get the records. Death serious illness incapacitation or unavoidable absence of the taxpayer or members a member of the taxpayer's immediate family and the fourth thing is other reason which is, which establishes that you use all ordinary business care and prudence to meet your federal tax obligations but were nevertheless unable to do so in other words you just you know you did everything you could to make sure that the things things went right but somehow they didn't. So the IRS sees that and is able to give you a break. Now, one keyword here is sound reasons. And another keyword is if established. So sound reasons, if established. In other words, you gotta provide the, the sound reasons. You have to argue that the reasons are sound. In other words, they are solid. It's not just some kind of BS you're telling the government, right? This is some some solid reasons. So sound reason, if established. Now, the second part is that the if established means that the IRS is going to check. The IRS is going to evaluate the soundness of your argument. So on one end, on, on the first, you know, first step, you are going to present your case to the government. And the government will evaluate whether this case, your case, is sound. So it is very important when we get into this sort of situation to involve, if possible, if you have the budget for it, to involve a tax professional, somebody know, somebody who knows how to talk to the, the government. You want someone who has enough experience, who has been uh, rubbing elbows with the government, who has been rubbing elbows with the IRS, who knows how they talk, how they walk, somebody who knows IRS protocol, to kind of help you 
establish the soundness of the reasons so that when the IRS is trying to establish the veracity of your reasons, things go faster, right? So one quick last thing before we close this section here is that remember that a lack of funds, you know, ha not having money in and of itself is not reasonable cause for failure to pay on time. So if you're broke or something happens, this is not reasonable cause for failure to pay or for failure to file or pay on time, right? Now, however, the reasons for the lack of funds may meet reasonable cause criteria for the failure to pay penalty. In other words, you know, if if you don't have money, so let's say that, you know, you owe the government $1,000 right so you can't tell the government hey listen i don't have money you know i'm broke nothing you know they're not going to waive the, the the penalties simply because you are telling them hey listen i don't have the money i'm just broke but if you can show reasonable cause that you know for instance um you know because of hurricane a hurricane in your area things were just were you know there was some kind of natural disaster and this made you lose all your money guess what the irs will just approve the waiver or to go back to some some kind of very sad national disaster if you can tell the irs that oh listen because of 9 11 you know my business was destroyed my records were, de were destroyed a lot of stuff i don't have the money the government can understand that as a matter of fact a lot of people you know, millions of Americans and uh, thousands of companies use those, you know, they got those waivers after 9-11. So, you know, I I'm just trying to paint the picture here to say that, of course, the IRS is very adamant in enforcing the tax laws. But they are also flexible if you can show that you th th there were, you know, circumstances under which you couldn't perform. And they will give you the waiver that you that you deserve. We'll be right back right after this. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Are you still around? Are you having fun? Are you enjoying this show? I am. <laughs> and I'm doing marvelous. I hope you are doing marvelous. Welcome back. Question for the audience. What is your... Um, what is... Have you filed a waiver request with the IRS and what was the the outcome was it easy was it difficult comment below share the wealth with the community uh, let us know how it went let us know what didn't work what what works we want we, we're also we're always interested in hearing from our audience also share this content if you find it helpful so far like it subscribe <laughs> and also i keep forgetting this watch our ad breaks because we depend on ads to support this show <laughs> um you can comment also and you can uh, send us topics for uh, for further shows we would uh, gladly acknowledge you on air and we will say thank you thank you thank you now one thing that's very important is that as I said earlier, there are certain facts that establish reasonable cause. And as you seek the help of a lawyer or a, a an enrolled agent or a professional tax preparer, this could be a CPA for instance, there are certain facts that can help you and that can help the IRS determine whether you are right to get a waiver or not, right? Earlier I was talking about sound reasons if established. Now. Here are some facts you need to put into your letter of, uh, of a waiver request so that the IRS can say, okay, this person has, this taxpayer has established reasonable cause. So here are the facts you need to, you need in terms, of, in, in order to determine reasonable cause. What happened and when did it happen? What facts and circumstances prevented you from filing your return or paying your tax return during the period of time you did not file and or pay your taxes timely? How did the facts and circumstances affect your ability to file and or pay your taxes 
or perform your other day-to-day -day responsibilities. So here, they're, they're not only interested in the circumstances and facts that prevented you from filing your taxes, but they're also interested in whether or not those, the same circumstances prevented you from working, from making money, from conducting business, right? So they can link, they can, they can have a linkage between, oh, he or she doesn't have money and he or she didn't pay on time. Another question the IRS looks at when they evaluate reasonable cause is once the fact and circumstances changed, what actions did you take to file and or pay your taxes on time? And in the case of a corporation, a state or trust, did the affected person or a member of that individual's immediate family have sole authority to execute the return or make the deposit or payments? This are very important questions and if you want to work with uh, with a lawyer or a tax preparer or an accountant make sure that you remember those five five questions because this these are the questions these are the the uh, the the criteria under which the government is going to judge whether or not your request for a waiver is frivolous or for real you know to, to really determine whether this is a this is a frivolous or or a, a, a real a real request they will be asking the same question I just listed to you now what are the documents you need to prove that you know if you are getting you are asking some for some kind of relief right because that's the bottom line here the, the bottom line here is that you want penalty fee relief you want them to waive the penalty fee you want them to 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 waive the underpayment penalty the, the the failure to pay the failure to file all this stuff you want them to waive that fee so you need to provide those documents now the IRS says that most reasonable cause explanations require that you provide documentation to support your claim so the government can have a clear view a clear idea of what, what really happened so things like hospital or courts records or a letter from your physician to establish illness or incapacitation with specific start and end dates. This is really important. The, the government wants to have specific start and end dates. Why? Because when it comes to taxes, it's all about <laughs> dates, right? It's all about filing on time. It's all about filing taxes related to income you made during a, a certain period, this kind of stuff. So they want to see those records they also want to see documentation of natural disasters or other events that pre prevent compliance. So, of course, if you have a national disaster like 9-11, the IRS doesn't need to see that. But if you are talking about a local, a local disaster, something that happened within the, within the confines of a city or a village or of a, of a rural area, the IRS, and, and if the, the disaster was not you know, sort of covered at the national level, the government wants to see some kind of documentation. And usually, uh, what I've seen, at least during research here, is what we've seen is that it's very easy to prove that with uh, newspaper clips. You know, so you can just uh, have newspaper um, headlines or newspaper articles that have uh, covered the, uh, the disaster pretty extensively and just attach that to the letter you sent to the, the government now another thing to also think about here is that you you are you want to have a, a waiver of the penalty but the other question is is interest relief available in other words can the can the government waive the interest now the answer is very simple no interest cannot be abated for reasonable cause so even though you are negotiating with the government what you want to have to pay in the end interest is still charged on a penalty okay so the interest interest is still charged now if the penalty ends up being reduced or removed then that interest will also vanish proportionately right so if you have an, an unpaid balance on your account interest will continue to accrue 
until the full amount the account is paid in full so this is very important to kind of remember that so one thing is that all of, all of this info is kind of cool but if you want to have more specific information about your particular case it's always good to call the IRS directly and the good thing is they have a, a total free number on, on there on the on the, on the notice that they sent you because they will be sending you a notice to uh, notice for uh, underpayment you know notice for um, underpayment penalty notice for failure to pay penalty notice for uh, failure to file penalty so there is always a total free number on that notice and you know one thing you want to do is, as soon as you get the notice and if you want to resolve uh, the issue you want to call the toll free number ASAP so you can call them to either resolve the issue with your notice or to request penalty relief due to reasonable cause now of course if you if you think you qualify for reasonable cause if you if you if you think you qualify for penalty relief then you uh, from the date you speak to the the IRS representative you can either mail them the um, you can mail them the, the documents or you can even just email it to them you can even fax them sometimes you know and the bottom line again is to uh, prepare things very correctly because they will take you at, at face value so what you show them will tell them whether or not you are lying or telling the truth you know and this is why I always recommend that you want to have a professional with you it could be a, an attorney a tax lawyer or a tax accountant or anybody else you know any any financial professional any finance professional who is well versed in the subtleties of the US tax code both at the federal level and at the state level you know and that will help you get the tax relief get the um, the the penalty relief faster we'll be right back right after this welcome back folks to uh this great show uh this is the sweetie kitty show and we are having an interesting conversation around taxes how to file taxes quickly how to pay less taxes <laughs> so this is really in this show we are giving you the easy peasy easy peasy easy peasy playbook on how to file taxes quickly think about that how to get refund fast think about that how to avoid huge penalties think about that how to get fiscal debt relief quickly think about it and how to keep the IRS happy boom 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 <laughs> now talking about taxes is a very complicated convoluted process what we're trying to do here is to present things in a very easy way in a very easy peasy way so I want to talk to you now about tax debt relief earlier I was talking about the fact that if you are looking for penalty relief penalty relief is different from debt relief right even though the penalty if not paid soon becomes part of the debt relief right now the IRS by law usually doesn't want to give fiscal debt relief now there are a few cases where they do so before I, I dig deeper into uh, tax debt relief, I just want to quickly give a shout out again to our beautiful and, and wonderful uh, fans and listeners and, uh, and viewers. We always take it seriously to give a shout out to our fans because we believe that in creating uh, a Swedish Kiwi community and having a wonderful and vibrant community, it's always important to acknowledge and recognize those community members who are doing great who are helping us find great topics who are helping us find uh, who are helping us suggest topics that will be relevant to our community subjects that will help people make more money advance in life be happy comply with the comply with laws that kind of good stuff so we want to acknowledge Denzel Copeland in Natrona Kansas Denzel Copeland Natrona Kansas Thank you, Angel. We love you. Ashton Dunn in Corbin, Kansas. Thank you, Ashton. Aaron Cox in Harper, Kansas. Beautiful state of Kansas. We want to give a shout out to all our viewers and listeners and fans in, in the beautiful, 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 gorgeous state of Kansas. Now, let's talk about tax debt relief. 
What is it? In a nutshell, it's, it, it just goes this way. If you can't afford to pay your taxes on time, you may qualify for some form of tax debt relief. Now, of course, the relief comes in the form of a payment plan, right? So basically, the IRS is saying, listen, we will help you pay this payment plan over a number of months or years in some cases. So you, you either have a, a payment plan or a debt settlement with the IRS. So if you think that you need a tax debt relief, you want to act quickly to resolve your issues, right? Because, because as I said earlier, the IRS charges a failure to pay a failure to pay penalty of 0.5% of your unpaid taxes per month or part of a month plus interest. So interest starts accruing on the day your taxes are due, right? So basically, taxes are usually due in the states around mid-April. Sometimes the, the the date changes. It could be April 15, April 16, April 17, but it's always around mid-April. And so taxes starts accruing on the day you you your taxes are due, right? And continues until you pay your bill in full. So if you owe, for instance, ten thousand dollars. And you pay the balance six months late, you will be hit with a failure to pay a failure to pay penalty of how much? Three hundred, right? So three hundred plus the amount of interest that's accrued. So a, a lot of people say, "Oh, that this doesn't sound like a lot," but it is. If you if you delay the payments long enough, the penalty can go all the way to twenty five percent. So here, it, it, you know, in your case. What you have here is 25% of, of unpaid taxes, 10,000, that's 2,500. And that's not, uh, that's not small, uh, that's not a chunk of, a ch a chunk of cash. This is a lot of money. So this is very important now. So tax debt relief, again, happens either through a payment plan or a debt settlement with the IRS. Debt settlement just means that you are paying, you know, the government agrees to get less than you owe them. So if you owe them 10 grand and you can't pay the 10 grand, they will evaluate whether you qualify for the debt settlement. And if they, if you do, they will take whatever you uh, whatever you or they think is best. So it might be 70% of the debt. So you pay 7,000, you know, seven grand as opposed to 10 grand. Now it is, there is something very important here that I want to make sure that I that I see here. It's you should be very very careful about tax relief companies. You know you've probably seen on, on you've probably seen on TV or in in some on, in some ads that there are some companies that purport they they claim to be tax relief companies and what they do is they offer to help distressed taxpayers by reducing or even eliminating their tax debt. Right. So and what they do is they say something like, oh, yeah, it's possible to settle your tax debt for less than the full amount you owe through the through your through an IRS offer and compromise. And that's that's called OIC. Right. And but all of these things, a lot of them can be a, a scam, because even though many of these companies charge non-refundable fees and those fees can run sometimes in thousands of dollars. The scary part here is that they may not be able to deliver on their promises because, you know, it's like somebody coming to you and say, listen, if you pay me well enough, if you pay me $10,000, I will allow you to get hired at this company. Or if you pay me $10,000, I will work for you and I will sign a, I will sign an agreement on your behalf with the government. Nobody knows the outcome of such negotiations, actually, even uh, very senior lawyers at at the uh, prominent law firms will tell you that you never know when negotiating with the government what the outcome will finally be so be very wary be very wary of those individuals who are offering you to pay a huge a humongous non-refund non-refundable fee in exchange for you know in exchange for an OIC so an offer and compromise because it's not easy to qualify for an offer and compromise I'll speak more about that later on but it's not very easy and the criteria I should warn you are very strict right are very strict so the thing is that um, you know you, 
there's a lot of stuff there. The government does not allow you to be in the middle of bankruptcy. So if you are in the middle of a bankruptcy, you don't qualify for OIC. If you're not if you're not up to date with all filing and payments requirements, you cannot qualify for an OIC. And if you don't meet other qualifications that I will talk about later on, you cannot meet all all, all uh, you cannot meet an OIC requirements here. So what's very important is that some companies want to venture in um you know they venture into very deep 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 scam territory here and what they do is they take your money and they don't send it to the irs which is even worse right because i mean now we're talking big big crime here we're talking fbi level of of crime in other words the kind of crime that gets the fbi involved here so basically this is you know imagine that you are telling a client and those companies will come and tell you hey listen you owe the irs 10 10 grand right if you pay us three grand or if you pay us one thousand dollars and you give us seven thousand that's eight thousand we will negotiate with the with the government and oic where we pay the oic on your behalf seven grand and we get paid for one for one grain so they take your eight grand and they just vanish they just they just disappear so they are taking not only your money but they're also scamming the government so a lot of reasons why you don't want to get into that it's just better to hire an attorney so this is one person an attorney or a cpa or an accountant that who would just follow that that case for you and and uh, that way you, you always want to reach out to somebody who is reputable who is known in the industry for a cpa you want to make sure you double check the cpa's license to make sure he or she has the experience he or she is uh he's active has, has an active license that kind of stuff there's no complaints on her on his on his or her file that kind of stuff now let me quickly give you here the signs of a tax debt relief scam because there are a lot of uh, those type of things out there and i want you to recognize them very quickly now one thing you want to do here is that uh you know if somebody is guaranteeing debt forgiveness they're promising to reduce your or even uh, eliminate your tax debt that's a sign of uh of a scam if they're pledging to get penalties and interest waived that's a big no-no if they're soliciting soliciting business directly through letters or emails you don't want you want to you don't want to have them you know if, if they fail to assess your financial background you know right away this is a big no-no if they're using tactics that you know delay your case such as for instance they are repeatedly asking you for some kind of info you know that's that's a big no-no or if they are informing you you know after you've prepaid that you know no longer qualify for debt relief or that the irs has rejected your oic that kind of stuff are just big no-no and you know that okay this is not the way you want to go We'll be right back right after this. Welcome back, folks, to, uh, you know, we're still here talking about taxes and IRS and uh, all the beautiful things that happen here and our ways to just make it very easy for you to get in, in one shot all everything you need to move forward with the IRS and get all the info you need. This is very important. So now there are options. There are options if you have um, some kind of, if you're falling behind, you know, if you are having problems and you can't pay your taxes, there are tax debt relief options. You know, one thing you have to do is if you're struggling with paying the, the amount you owe in taxes, you have to respond quickly. Now, of course, a lot of people, you know, the first thing they do is they just freak out, right? They freak out when they receive some kind of notification from the government. That's not the way to go. What you want to do is don't ignore the problem. Don't hide the problem. Don't hide from the problem. Sit with a specialist and talk to a government worker who can help fix the problem. If you can't pay your taxes, your first step should be, the, should be to contact the IRS directly. I mean, they understand, right? They understand that people have people go through issues. So in the case of federal taxes, the, uh, the IRS has options that might be able to help you now i talked about payment plans right payment plans are very helpful so you know this is just it, it's just what it is it's self self-evident what the iris does is that they allow you to um to spread the payments over a, uh, a number of months 
you know and this is you can do this on a short-term basis or have a long-term payment plan with the irs now remember however that any payment plan that you have signed with the irs will come with inherent penalties and interest on the unpaid balance until you make your final payment right this makes sense it's just like imagine you have a payment plan with a credit card company or with um with uh with with the student loan company right of course they agree to the payment plan because they're helping you to they, they are alleviating the pain in the short term but you got to pay them for that alleviation for that sort of compromise so the way you do it is by by allowing them to so they are giving you peace of mind in the short term but you are paying that peace of mind by continuing to have penalties and interest on the unpaid balance until you make your final payment so as long as you don't have the asset accessible to pay off the debts and there there is no income requirement for the payment plan you know in other words if you don't have a house somewhere or you don't have a house or uh, you don't have a, a car you don't have anything that can can make the IRS think you are filing a frivolous plan uh, arrangement there is no income requirement so the short-term plan gives you four months over which you should make the automatic payments so you can use uh, anything you can use a credit card you can use a debit card a money order a check a checking account whatever it is you can do that to pay the government now if you need more than four months to pay the long-term payment plans give you a couple of options here what you can do is you can set up an, an automatic electronic payment method which is in my in my belief in my in my opinion the best thing to do so you basically you know do that or you can send manually a check or money order to the go to the government now the thing is if you have an, uh, an automatic plan if you do it online you have to apply online really it costs 31 bucks as of the date of this show i mean the the amount are totally different but there are fees there are because you have to apply for the plan with the irs if you apply online right now the the cost is 31 bucks if you apply over the phone it's 107 it's 107 dollars that's if you agree to a, an automatic plan so that you are sending the money to the irs every month automatically if you agree to a non-automatic plan, the fees are $149 for online for an online application and $225 for a phone application. So both plans have a setup fee. So the setup fee as of the date of this show is $43 setup fee for low income applicants. And, and that's based on the federal poverty guidelines. And so basically what you want to do is you want to really go online and really check all the um, all the criteria there all the payments all the amounts that you have to pay to set up the fee and, and see if you qualify for that because again I just talked about federal poverty guidelines there are guidelines there are ways for the government to check whether or not you meet the income requirements so that's the that's the um, that's the payment plan the debt settlement plan which is again the OIC the offer and compromise you know that happens if your tax debt is, is so high that you can't pay it back or you know you know doing so in your case would create a financial hardship if the IRS sees that those two either of two either of those two cases is present the tax debt is so high that you can't pay it back or to do so will create a financial hardship the irs might allow you to settle for less than what you owe again the government is trying to work with you here you know the government is trying to work with you as long as you are trying to work with them right <laughs> so i think it kind of goes both ways right it's like a partnership here so you want to check to see if you are eligible to participate in, in an oyc and on, on the government website there is a link if you go to the IRS website and you tap in offer and compromise there is an entire page that talks about uh, what is it what, what an OIC is and there is an important link that is there is an important link that is called offer and compromise pre-qualifier so there is an OIC pre-qualifier 
whereby the IRS determines your eligibility by looking at the, follow, the, the following. They look at your ability to pay, your income, your expenses, your asset equity. In other words, your asset minus your, your liability, you know, that's your equity. So whatever you own versus what you owe. So that's very important. And so those are the four things. Of course, they look at other stuff, but they look at those four things primarily to determine whether or not you qualify for the OIC. And that's this is very important. Now, of course, we're talking about this at the federal level, right? States also have an OIC program. So chances are, if you owe money, if you owe the feds money, you probably owe the states too. So what you want to do is, and I'm, I'm, com I'm confident that when you speak to a specialist, they will look at your situation both ways. So they'll look at your situation from a federal point of view, but also from a state standpoint. And, and, and this is what you really want to do, right? And sometimes at the city level, but it's more state and federal. We will be right back right after this. Welcome back, welcome back folks to another section of this beautiful conversation about taxes, the beauty about taxes, the good thing about taxes, everything you need to know to, to move forward. We appreciate you sticking uh, sticking around with us to, to hear the content. If you have any feedback about, any insight about taxes, about dealing with the IRS, let us know in the comment below. Let us know how to um, how to really, really, really uh, get a great conversation going on. We we always appreciate having com comments from our viewers. This kind of helps the community grow. We want to remember right now. We want to give a, a big shout out to our beautiful viewers. We have right now Frankie Butler from Kester, Louisiana. Frankie, we love you. Thank you so much, Lane Matthews from Holly Beach, Louisiana. Holly Beach, Louisiana. We love the city. We love Lane Matthews and, and, his, and his family. Sophia Stevens in Colfax, Louisiana. Thank you, Sophia, for listening to us, for suggesting topics. We appreciate the dedication. We appreciate the uh, commitment and the uh, help. Thank you so much. Now, if you like this kind of comments, this kind of content we've been having so far, please consider subscribing to our channel like the content share with share it comment below give us more feedback you can contact us also through social media you can hang uh, hang out with us also on our website we appreciate your uh, your company this is very this is awesome 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 <laughs> now let's quickly jump into um, another important element here now what are the types of tax resolution services because remember here, this show is about, is trying to give you an easy peasy playbook on how to file taxes quickly, get refunds fast, avoid huge penalties, get fiscal debt relief, and keep the IRS happy, right? So we wanna talk about the types of tax resolution services. Now there are a lot of, uh, there are a variety of tax resolution services. Here, especially for consumers who owe more than five thousand dollars in back taxes or face legal consequences from the IRS again if you owe less than five thousand chances are it's just better for you to find to to sign an agreement with the IRS in terms of a payment plan it's just, so it's just a lot easier it's less hectic you can go to you can go to you can go to bed at night and and, and and sleep comfortably and snore and have fun and do all this kind of stuff but if you owe five thousand <laughs> then i think the stakes are higher so you need to pay attention right now to what I, what, I'm, what i'm about to say the tax resolution services now these things are very important. The IRS goes through several strategies when you owe them more than $5,000. Number one, you have something called the IRS audit defense. Now the IRS audit defense is just a field whereby 
there are some attorneys and some CPAs and some um, uh, and, and some tax accountants and uh, EAs enrolled agents they will defend you when the IRS examines the accuracy of your tax return now this happens you know for you to for you to hire someone that means that your tax return in itself is pretty convoluted right so you want to have an audit defense so your IRS audit defense is can be made up of people attorneys CPAs uh, those specialists who will defend you vis-a-vis -vis the IRS you always have you have another tax resolution services that that the industry offers which is wage garnishment resolution now this is very important because the IRS you know they have you know the government has the authority to garnish your, your wages right so basically if you don't pay the government if you don't respond to them if you don't have a, a payment plan with them but they see that you're still making money they just will just come and take the cash so they will garnish your wages so in the industry there are a lot of um, a, a lot of professionals that offer that can help you actually have a wage garnishment negotiations and what they do is they will help you resolve a situation in which the government is taking a portion of your paycheck to satisfy your tax debt another type of tax resolution services found in the industry here is lien and le and levy removal so if the, if the government places a levy on your property or a lien on your property or even even before they do so you can have a tax attorney or you can have a an, an enrolled agent or anybody who was qualified you can ha you can have that person prevent the seizure of property by the government again it's very important to hire someone who has experience in IRS protocol who understand how things works and most importantly and this is my recommendation number one to have someone who has been rubbing elbows with IRS officials for many many years somebody who is comfortable talking to them who knows them professionally who has dealt with them in the past who understands how the, the how things work so they can they can get you what you want real fast so that's lien and levy removal of course that's the offer and compromise that we just talked about so offer and compromise you can have professionals this this is also part of tax resolution services so this through the OIC you can settle for less than the amount owed due to a disputed amount of tax debt or an inability to pay the full amount right of course this is after you know you know your assets can't cover the difference right because the the government will always make sure that you have if you have money to pay the debt that you don't have like a, an OIC right there is something called a CNC so those are debts that are not collectible so for instance you owe like $100,000 and you are just dead broke and the government knows that they will never get the cash unless some kind of magic happens unless you are part of I don't know you're some kind of uh, you know Star Wars <laughs> alien or something <laughs> <laughs> so basically the, the the bottom line here is that if you have a currently not collectible case what the the tax resolution professional will help you do is they will help you get a deferred payment if you can prove that you have financial hardship you know for instance like I said like unemployment or like a, a disaster or you file for bankruptcy that kind of stuff now there is also you know one thing that I want to say here is that when it comes to tax re tax resolutions we've talked about things that happen outside courts you know things that happen outside the legal system the traditional legal system now can the IRS criminally prosecute you if you don't file this is a very important question right you know so basically uh, can the uh, the IRS the answer is yes if you don't willfully pay your taxes I'm not even getting to all those sort of crazy uh, you know sort of um, conspiracy conspiracy sort of uh, you know stories or conspiracy sort of theories that they say well you don't have to file taxes no you have to file taxes people will want to 
could tell you, hey, you know, in the Constitution, you don't have to file taxes because it's written here and there, whatever. File your taxes. Get peace of mind. If you have problems, contact the government ASAP and have a professional back you up. Have someone to negotiate on your behalf if you have a situation. Don't believe those who are telling you that you don't have to file taxes. You do have to file taxes. You have to file taxes. So if you don't will if you don't willfully, if you willfully don't pay taxes, of course you can you can fail criminal prosecution and jail time. Yes, you can face that kind of prosecution. Now it's true that lately the, the IRS has targeted some very prominent citizens, right? Because they were trying to send they were trying to send a message to the general public. So they have targeted people like politician, drug dealers, you know, tax uh, protesters, people who believe that there's, there's no, you, know, you don't have to do, you, you don't have to pay taxes. They have been going after high income citizens because they know, the IRS knows that prosecution of those individuals can be used as a headline grabbing deterrent for everybody else, right? So basically, they've done a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, aggressive prosecutions at that level. The thing here is that the IRS has authority to prepare a return on behalf of the non-filer. That's one thing people don't know. Congress has granted the IRS the authority to prepare a return on behalf of the non-filer. So if you let the government prepare your taxes, they will they will make sure that you know they give you as fewer deductions as possible they would just probably give you the standard deductions as opposed to the itemized deductions for example right because they don't know what kind of deductions you are entitled to so they'll go back to the default the default being here the standard deductions so this is one of the reasons why you want to you want to file taxes we'll be right back right after this Welcome back, folks, to uh, another session of City Q here. I'm just very happy. I hope you are doing fantastic. Are you doing fantastic? Are you doing marvelous? Are you? Are you? Are you? Yes. I'm, doing I'm, just, having, I'm just learning a lot as uh, I, I'm learning a lot of the stuff as I'm going through this content. You know, I'm having as much fun as I had when, when the whole production team was re researching this 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 show this content here now before i um i start about how to keep the irs thrilled this is very important i want to give a big shout out to gabriel roberts in bridgeton maine in the beautiful state of maine bridgeton maine gabriel roberts and he's family. thank you we want to give a shout out to lane moray in south Wyndham in maine and Ellie Richards in Clayton Lake, Maine. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Lane. Thank you, Gabriel. We love you and we are very thrilled to have you around. We are very thrilled and very grateful for your contribution, for your suggestions. It's 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 indeed appreciated. So for those who just join us right now, if you weren't here at the beginning, we, we are just talking about taxes. We are helping our viewers and listeners file taxes peacefully, have peace of mind, go to bed at night, sleep peacefully like a baby. Here is, this is the, the easy peasy playbook on how to file taxes quickly, get refunds fast, get your ka-ching ka -ching fast, avoid huge penalties, get fiscal debt relief, and keep the IRS happy, 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 because I'm happy. <laughs> happy, happy, happy. So, we talked about how to file taxes quickly, right? Get the refunds fast, avoid huge penalties, get fiscal debt relief. Now, let's talk about how to keep the IRS happy. Specifically, what are the steps that you need to take to keep the IRS thrilled? And how to know if you are in good standing with the agency. Now, the first thing you need to do is hire a tax attorney. Now, I can't emphasize this enough. You need to hire someone who is who understands who understands what you're talking about, the kind of issues you have. Now, you might want to save some money here and there, but it's just better to have to to spend five hundred dollars 
and hire someone who's who does this 24 7 than trying to figure things on figure out things on your own it just wouldn't happen so go for a tax attorney or tax accountant you know and remember the tax professionals they have a special irs hotline to get their clients account information that's what a lot of people don't know about there is a special irs hotline that is dedicated for tax professionals so you know experienced tax pros can enter they can really sift through irs transcripts and they will know right away if something is amiss you know they can interview they can interview irs representatives to fully understand your tax situation remember earlier i was talking about the fact that you want to hire someone who has been rubbing elbows with irs representatives for years you know they've been having they've been going to happy hours they know each other or they probably know themselves in the professional context so that they can interview the the, the tax professional and this will save you time and headaches potentially headaches you can sleep easy at night i want you to sleep easy at night so understanding whether you're in good standing with the irs isn't easy but it is important so you want to get professional help asap now if you don't want that you want to do things on your own you can certainly do so so you can really sort of call uh the IRS. if you go on the on the irs website you can view uh you have every citizen have every taxpayer has something called irs account and in, in your online IRS account, you can view your tax bills, see payments you've made in the last 18 months, and you can download your transcripts. Now, if you know, then this info is gathered and collected by the government, and you can access it on, on the government web, website. So if your transcripts show any kind of unusual activity, you have to contact the IRS to learn more right of course you got to provide some kind of uh, authentication uh, of the authentication criteria but you can get the data now the irs maintains records on you such as your irs account status right so whether you have some penalty charges some adjustments the tax payments you've made your wage and income information they, they know everything about you big brother big brother big brother so they get that data compiled from statements that your employers banks and the other payers have to file with the irs every year right so if you have things like you know so you get money from people from from your employer the employer will have to send the same info to the irs so they kind of they can actually corroborate what you're saying on your um, on your tax return uh, you also have the details of the tax returns that you file with the irs so everything from charitable contributions to to miscellaneous deductions, all of these things is is compiled. And another thing that the IRS maintains records on you about is any pending IRS actions, such as liens or levies, if you owe taxes and haven't paid. So the the, the best way to get the, the the info is to just request a transcript. And again, as I said before, you can request the transcript, the transcript on irs.gov on the website, or you can call, uh, there is a 1-800 number. So it's 1-800-908-9946. Again, the number is 1-800-906-9946. If you call that number and give your uh, personal info, your social security number and all this kind of stuff, they can place the request for you and you can download that you can download the data directly sometimes it happens instantaneously or after 24 hours now how do you get your uh, iris transcripts and just kind of talk about what is what stands for iris transcripts right because i was talking about requesting a transcript now the iris transcript show your tax history but it shows also your account activity. And this could be very helpful, particularly helpful for things like penalties charged, filing information, audits, CP2000 notices, payment amount and dates, your filing information, your filing information, and other activity on your account transcript. Now it's very important to, to understand that if a transcript can be likened to a credit report just think of it as a credit report 
it's more your tax report. So you gotta take a look at it. You can see in, uh, inaccuracies, you can see some mistakes, and you can see also, it gives you insight into what the government knows about you. And by law, the IRS has the, uh, has the obligation to furnish that kind of, uh, to provide that kind of uh, info to you. So by looking at it, by reviewing it, you can see where you're at exactly when it comes to taxes and it's very important also. So this is a, this is always good to have. You can call the IRS directly. Like I said, I gave you a number before. They have something called an IRS Taxpayer Assistance Center. You know, and you can walk into, this is a live office. This is a physical office. It's a facility. And they have, and they have it usually, um, <clears throat> excuse me. They have it usually in uh, many places in the States and in various cities and look for it go online go on irs.gov and you can get very quickly the closest irs taxpayer assistance center where you can just go and talk to someone live now remember that the irs doesn't readily answer tax law questions about your situation they're not interested in that because what they do is that if you have a phone line if you call them if the, their phone lines will usually divert taxpayers to irs.gov for answers because they don't want to get into the 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 situation where they, they become tax advisors or they become you know they do an interview you do an interview on them and they have to answer to you so this is why they would rather just you having a lawyer or an accountant to talk to them either way you can contact the irs directly to to check your compliance status and that kind of stuff we will be right back right after this. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. It's, I'm just very happy to see you here. We are about to wrap up this the, this conversation today about taxes, and I and I just uh, I I am so grateful. We uh, the whole the whole production team is very grateful. Uh, this is the Sweetie Kiwi Show, the world's largest infotainment show. Some of our content is uh, geared towards the information information category some is geared toward the entertainment category today we are more on the information category because taxes are an, are an important an important topic and uh, we want to quickly recap what we've been talking about here we've been talking about basically this this easy peasy guide on how to quickly file taxes get refunds fast avoid huge penalties get fiscal debt relief and keep the iris happy this easy peasy playbook was was produced with the idea that all citizens all taxpayers should be able to file taxes quickly so the content of this guide is as follows very quickly so i spoke about how to file taxes quickly whether you can file you can self file online or you can hire a tax preparer you can also get your refund fast by you know basically um, filing online getting uh, the the direct deposit option you can avoid and also uh, signing the, the return is very important you can avoid huge penalties by you know working around by making sure you pay you pay on time that you don't have you don't underpay you can get fiscal debt relief by doing a couple of things one of which is uh, negotiating with the government either through a, um, a debt relief or getting getting into a payment plan you can also make the IRS happy by uh, hiring a tax attorney or tax accountant and making sure that your transcripts are in sync with reality by checking your transcript periodically and making sure that you are in sync with uh, uh, with reality in other words what the what the government has on you is in sync with what you think you should be having as a, as a reality as a fiscal reality so those are really important things now that was the recap let's jump quickly into the city what's the call to action here because this whole conversation was interesting at least i hope it was for you <laughs> But the most important thing here is to have a call to action. You need to have an action plan so that you can put your fiscal affairs in order if they aren't already and avoid the sort of nightmare that comes with, uh, you know, some kind of ongoing 
interaction with the IRS. Nobody wants to deal with the IRS. It's just like the HR department, right? You get hired and that's it. You don't want to talk to anybody in HR officially or, you know, no. You only talk to them when you enter, when you get hired or when, when you are leaving the company, right? With the IRS, they're not hiring you, but uh, you know, as soon as you start working, you have to, to remember the government and that's all you need, right? You just want to make sure everything works fine. So the best way to do this, the call today's call to action, I want you to hire a tax lawyer or tax accountant to sort your fiscal affairs today. Determine whether you will owe the IRS this year or will expect a refund based on a preliminary assessment done by your tax preparer or yourself. I want you to be proactive and contact the agency if you will have a tax obligation. Start talking to the IRS. File an extinction. Very important. You can, you can obtain an additional four months, that's 120 days, by filing Form 4868. If you file the Form 4868 and you need to file that before mid-April, before the deadline, if you file that, you may need to prepare and file the form on paper. Either way, you have an additional four months. And the last thing, the last thing in this call to action is to find a way to ask for a deferment or a payment plan, a payment plan, if you know you'll be owing money. So this is really about it, folks. I am very happy to have talked to you for all this, um, all this minutes. It is great to have you. I'll be saying uh, goodbye now in terms of uh, today's conversation. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I totally forgot. The pro tip that I wanted to tell you, this is very important. I will tell you the pro tip. Here is today's pro tip. Oh, I'll be telling you right after this. <laughs> I'm glad you still around for the pro tip. Today's pro tip is, if you're thinking about having a, a, a long-term sort of financial plan and fiscal plan, do some charitable giving, some, you know, donate to charity. Get your health care coverage in order and defer your income. By giving money, you are not only, you know, meeting your karmic, your karma responsibilities, but you're also doing a good things because you are actually reducing your tax liabilities while doing also something good. If you get your health care coverage in order, it allows you to not to be active longer in terms of, uh, you know, earning income, but it also allows you to be in sync with the government ability to collect taxes on you because you wouldn't be able to rely on, on things like Medicare or Medicaid to basically pay for your medical uh, treatments. And the third thing is defer your income because the money you're making now and paying taxes, you might be able to to defer it and pay uh, taxes on it 20 and 30 years from now when you are in a different tax bracket. Because right now you might be in a in a higher tax bracket, but 20 or 30 years from now, when after you retire, you could be in a different tax bracket. So the taxes you're paying today, if you're paying it today by deferring it and putting it into a 401k or in, or into an IRA or a good investment account, investment account, you are able to earn income on that income that you have now and pay taxes on it 20 or 40 years down the road. So those are the top three pro tips. I had for you today. Thank you so much. And I will see you later. Remember, this was Sweet Kiwi. Remember to stay marvelous. I'll talk to you later. Bye.